Welcome back. We're now to our sixth set of compositional guidelines, and this is aiming right at the heart of what we call the art ingredient in photography. We have our science and we also have our art. Um, the next slides in this set are all going to be centered around an element of art that's called value. Value is one of those words that can be double meaning. Uh, we always think about value as price. What is the value of uh, Alfred Stieglitz vintage picture? $20,000. Uh, what is the value of my car after I've driven it 200,000 miles? <laughs> 50 bucks, okay? So there's that kind of value. But the value that we're going to be talking about is uh, in art terms, uh, value refers to shades of gray. Think back to the gray scale. I illustrated that in one of our little lectures. It's a long graduated bar of grays that goes from zero to 100 percent. And many times we try and have all those shades of gray appear in our work. They may be underlying the colors that we see, or if we do a black and white conversion, they're out there in the open for us. So the first compositional guideline that a photographer needs to be aware of is that light areas attract attention. So in this picture here, my eyes go immediately to the big checks. And I'm looking particularly at the white squares. There's a pattern of white squares. Now there are a couple of other light things. There's the shoes, there's a piece of litter on the other side of the fence, but this is a magnet for your eye. As you look around the picture, there are some pretty other, pretty interesting other things that are going on. Uh, this was probably taken in the 1960s or the 1970s when we had something called a snapshot aesthetic and uh, no longer did we use the F64 Ansel Adams and Edward Weston uh, principles to judge. Uh, we now had a very informal and much quicker type of photography, a more casual kind of photography. But the lesson to learn is when you are looking at a picture, and I want you to kind of blur your eyes slightly and see where the bright spots are. If they are close to your subject, if they are on your subject, that's usually a good thing. If there's bright spots in the corners of your picture, usually they act as a magnet to your eye and then your eye moves up to the corner and away from the subject. That's usually a bad thing. And one way that you can take care of that is by using a vignetting tool to darken corners. Uh, here's another case where light areas attract attention. Uh, we have the blooms and we have the roots and everything else is in monochrome. 
this is what we call a sepia toned S-E-P-I-A and uh, it's like a black and white picture but it's a brown and white picture. The next one, still talking about value, it reads low contrast and in parentheses all metal grays convey soft and misty moods. So if we were to plot this out on a grayscale that went all the way from white all the way down to black, what we would find is that we would have many, many, many what we call middle grays, something about 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, and it would be very low in pure white and to be very low in pitch dark black. So um, it's been a while, but I used to enjoy going over to California and we'd try and get a place close to the beach and I would get up in the morning and walk outside and everything was in a fog. And sometimes it was a thick fog, but other times the fog was thin enough that you could see things, but it kind of looked like this picture right here. So when I talk about a soft, misty mood, it's like you're looking at something through a fog. And the, the viewer will feel the mood. Um, this is another kind of a gray day. Um, no harsh shadows. Everything is diffused. Everything is soft. And so um, we have that kind of hushed feeling, uh, autumn feeling. Somebody's been picking the apples off of the tree. And uh, it's just a different feeling than what we're used to in the desert with our bright sunshine and stark, dark shadows. This is another example of low contrast, all metal grays convey a soft, misty mood. Now the other kind of uh, contrast is high contrast. High contrast is when the processing system doesn't really want to see anything in middle gray. And so when you go into Snapseed and you have the contrast slider, uh, if you push it to the right, you're going to see that all the middle grays, they migrate and they either become lighter or they become darker but they're not middle gray anymore. So uh, actually that's a pretty good place for you guys to study high contrast and low contrast. Uh, take a photo and turn it into black and white and then go to the contrast slider. You can do that in the black and white um, Snapseed tool or you can open up the new tool, uh, Tune Image, and you can go to Contrast. And you can see what happens when you go to High Contrast. There is a unwritten rule when people are judging photographs. Uh, and that unwritten rule says, don't blow out your highlights. What we mean by that is um, even though we have bright 
places in our picture, we probably want it to have at least a little bit of gray to it. When you blow out a highlight, it goes to zero. It's what's called paper white. And uh, it's very effective because it does grab your attention. And that's what this saying says. High contrast, in parentheses, all white and black, commands attention. So if you're making a poster, you might want to experiment and come up with a very graphic image uh, where the middle tones have kind of disappeared. And in this picture here, uh, if we plotted it out on a grayscale, we would have a whole lot of dark, dark, dark grays. And then we would have some white, and we'd have a little bit of middle, uh, light gray but we wouldn't have much in the middle. Here's another one, backlight. <clears throat> you can tell it's backlight because the shadows of the trees are coming straight to the camera. Um, middle grays are maybe a little bit present uh, down here in this area. But a whole lot of the picture is super light, super bright, or very, very, very dark. Okay? So um, nice rhythm here. We have repeating lines that go right across this picture. Your eye jumps from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, we have the primary center of interest in the foreground, and then this back here becomes the secondary center of interest, and it's framed nicely by these foreground elements. I hope this helps.